okay, we're on to our next class of rhythms. These are atrial rhythms. So atrial rhythms are different class of rhythms that are in a different part of the conduction pathway. So going back to our conduction pathway, we have our SA node as our beginning point. Those jump to our AV node, the bundle of Hiss. We've got our bundle branches and then our Purkinje fibers, okay? So with these, remember our first questions that we're asking is, is there a P wave? Now, when you're asking that question, remember you're not just asking, is there one? But you're asking, what does it look like? So it should be a nice, rounded P wave, not pointy, not inverted. It should look like a nice rounded P wave. Now in this particular rhythm that I've drawn to the best of my drawing ability, I purposely made these nice and pointy, okay? These wouldn't come from the SA node. So there's a class of rhythms that this one is actually coming from the AV node. This is actually atrial tachycardia. And atrial tachycardia usually has a much higher inherent rate. And so you would see these up around 150. So you would know that if you saw a fast rhythm and a really pointy P wave, that that could be considered atrial tachycardia. So atrial tachycardia, the way that we have the rules for that is the P wave, yes, but looks different. It is regular. The PRI is normal, so it falls into the 0.12 to 0.20. And this one usually is at least about 150 on our rate. So you know it's a fast rhythm, um, and it's usually something that needs to be treated. Okay. So also, if you have something else going on, what if... What if you had more P waves for each QRS? Okay, so what happens in the conduction pathway is that there is a safety net. So the safety net is called the AV junction. So the AV junction is made up of the bottom part of the AV node and the bundle of hips. And it's your safety net. So think of like the circus and you've got the little guy in tights and you've got the big net below him. This is your safety net. And so what he's doing is he's standing there and he is picking out um, when there's a problem that he's protecting you. So remember the heart is just a muscle and it pumps on its own. We're not telling it every time to pump. So sometimes you can malfunction. And so he's the little guy sitting there ready to act if he needs to. So what happens is these little pointy waves here, we have more than one for each QRS. So right away, we would know that, hey, there's not a one P wave for every QRS. So it's no P wave, okay? Now with this one, regularity, we can walk this out, but there's a better way to look at this one. So what is happening is the little safety net, because these have speeded up, these waves are happening at 150 to 250 per minute, okay? And that's too fast. So why is going too fast a problem for the heart? So what is the heart's focus? The heart's focus is to push blood around the body. So in order for it to do that, it has to fill. And that is the problem with tachycardia, is that you have to allow time for the heart to fill up, because otherwise, if it's just squeezing, there's nothing it's pushing out to the body. It has to allow resting time for the blood to fill and then squirt it out, okay? So tachycardia, the problem with that one is it doesn't give enough time to fill. So the little guy sitting there on the safety net says, nope, we can't pump at this high of a rate, so I'm gonna block it from going further down to the ventricle and pumping the ventricle. So what happens in this one is you have more atrial waves than you have ventricular waves, okay? So in this case, you had three waves for this one, you had two waves for this one, 
you had three, you had three, you had two, okay? So those would be considered conduction ratios. Okay? This is actually one class of rhythms that can be either regular or irregular. There's a second one that we'll talk about. But this actually is one class of rhythms that can be either regular or irregular. Um, PRI, you can't measure a PRI because we don't have one consistent P wave and QRS relationship. So there is no PRI. Okay? And then you would measure the rate. Now, when you're measuring this rate, you would measure the QRS rate, and that would give you whether or not uh, whatever the heart rate was. With this one, you consider controlled to be less than 100, uncontrolled greater than 100, okay? So this one is a flutter, atrial flutter. And these are flutter waves. They're also talked about a lot of times like a sawtooth or sawtooth pattern because it's one stimulation point that's somewhere down in the AV node and it is firing, but it's malfunctioning. It's firing too fast. So the little guy with the safety net is saying, nope, we're going to not let all the ventricle stimulation through. And so you'll see conduction patterns that tell you whether or not the rate is controlled or uncontrolled. Okay? All right. So now let's say that we have a point in, so that was this little point in the AV node area that was causing the problem. But now let's say we have multiple points in the atrium that are firing all at the same time, and they're trying to get down the pathway. So with this one, we had one point that was malfunctioning. If we have multiple points that are malfunctioning, then our shapes are going to look different. Because remember, the time that it takes for that point to get down to the conduction pathway, all that does is make a shape. And so those shapes are going to look different. So with this one, we're going to have erratic looking shapes. Now, with this one, we have a rate in the atrium, these have sped up of approximately 350 beats per minute. Now, is the heart going to want to beat 350 beats per minute? I mean, think about that for a second. That's six beats for every second. That's huge. So the little guy in safety, uh, little guy by the safety net is saying, absolutely not. We're not going to let all of those stimulations through. So he's just going to pick when to fire a few, okay? So on our questions, is there a P wave? Remember the question is, is there one P wave for every QRS consistently shaped and rounded? Where people get mixed up with this one is they'll pick a point and they'll go, well, that one kind of looks like a P wave, but it does not matter. Remember the question is, is there a consistent regular shaped one P wave for every QRS? And when you ask the question that way, the answer is no, absolutely not. So in this one, there is no P wave. This one has to be irregular. Because the guy is just letting stimulation through so that the ventricle at least pumps, it's just picking points, okay? And because they're multiple points, they're firing at different time periods. So this one can never, ever, ever be regular. So if you have this one, the same thing is true for controlled and uncontrolled. Less than 100, greater than 100. You may have heard the terminology RVR, rapid ventricular response. That's these uncontrolled, okay? Rapid ventricular response would be greater than 100 in either of these two. This is your atrial fibrillation. What's really happening is the points in the heart are just quivering. All of these points are firing, it's quivering, it's fibrillating. And then the guy in the safety net will have it fire every now and then, just so that we get the blood pumping around the body. If this is somebody that's a new onset atrial fib, they won't feel very well at all. 
Some people that are chronic, they feel like this and they do fine with it. So this one is atrial fibrillation. So the hard and fast rule with atrial fib, you cannot be regular. So make sure you're looking at regularity because if you have something that's regular and you're trying to say that it's AFib, it doesn't fit into the rules, okay? So pay close attention to that. Now let's say we slow down um, these points. So instead of going at 350, let's say we're going at 80, okay? So the little guy in tights, is he trying to stop some of them? And so I hope you answered yourself and said no. That would be okay, 80 would be fine. So what happens with this one is we have multiple stimulation points in the atrium that are firing. So they're gonna have different shapes and they're gonna have different PRIs. But 80 is okay, so the little guy is gonna let all of the stimulation points down. So let's see what this one will look like. Okay, so let's go back to our questions. Is there a P wave? Well, there is a P wave for every QRS, but it is not the same shape and they all look different, okay? So yes, there's a P wave, but they're different from P wave to P wave. Yes, but different. Now, is it regular? Because it's going at that size uh, speed, you are gonna have fairly regular. If you walked it out, it'll be off a little bit, but it'll be mostly regular. Okay, your PRI should be mostly normal. Okay, and then you have um, the rate can be anything because you can have it be higher or lower. So this one is your wandering atrial pacemaker. In other words, the stimulation around the atrium is wandering around. So wandering atrial pacemaker. So this is one that you're going to see different P waves, but you'll have one QRS for every P wave that you see. Okay. All right. So that is our atrial rhythms. We have our atrial tachycardia. We have our atrial flutter. We have our atrial fib and we have our wandering atrial pacemaker. So look for the next video that talks about further down in the conduction ratio and the conduction pattern, which is our junctional rhythms. Stop. We have to cut this out.